Hey everybody, so exciting one. This is our first video sponsored by Buckle Guy and we have quite the video for you today. I'm super psyched on this. So today we're going to show you how we make our fully lined, fully stitched trays. These things are so nice and we do that using Buckle Guy's molds. So Buckle Guy makes these two part wet molds, three part really. Um, this is one I have going. We're going to make the bigger version of this and you can see they're a very tight fit but they are just awesome. So this is Wicket and Craig, I believe this is deer print leather. We're going to be using some Wicket and Craig panels as well. Um, I know this is, we're not usually salesy, but we're introducing you to Buckle Guy if you've never heard of them. They sell hides, but they also sell panels. So if you don't want to buy a full hide of leather, you can get a one square foot hide, you can get a two square foot hide. Um, they sell them in all different shapes, so if you want to get a four inch wide hide that's eight inches long to make three wallet shells, you can do that too. We're going to be using two panels of Wicket and Craig. And if Kalina pans up, actually I gotta hide my soda real quick though. Uh, they, uh, we bought, I bought all these. <laughs> this is not, I love these. These are so cool. Um, they're great. So I'm gonna show you a new one, how I put it together. And I'm gonna tell you all about what it's made out of because they use a special kind of plywood. They have them CNC'd locally in Massachusetts. And then we're gonna get to making one and show you how to do it all in this video. So there's a bunch of different shapes of these. They have circles and squares and hexagons. This is one of their newer ones. It's a pill shape, um, but it doesn't come like this. So this is the smaller version, and this is the big version. And the big version you can see is unopened because I wanted to show you how it comes just brand new because you have a lot of options. Now, the first thing is uh, we're doing a giveaway. So we're giving away a set of the pill-shaped wet molds, the big one and the small one. Uh, click the first link in the description, sign up for Buckle Guy's email list, and you're entered. That's all you gotta do. Uh, nothing fancy. So, let's get into setting this up. So the way I set these up, now, the, they're interesting, right, because I like this. It seems counterintuitive at first. You're like, why don't they just come put together? But, it makes a lot of sense. So this is the way they come. They come with your outer mold, your inner mold, and then just a flat piece. This is Russian birch. It's an untreated plywood that feels like it has like a, a coating on it, but it doesn't. And I can tell you from the molds I've had for months now, it, it's a really nice material because it just doesn't warp at all. Um, the way I do it is that I'm gonna put this together by centering the inner mold and the, on the outer mold, and then using my brad nailer to just put a couple of brads in but it comes like this so that you have options. You can stack other wood under this to control how deep, if you want to make, if you can pull off, I don't know if this is even possible, but if you want to make a six inch deep wet molded tray, you can stack leather under this and make it taller. And then when you slide this piece down all the way, it'll make a big tray that's this tall, if you can pull it off. Like I said, I don't even know if that's possible. The other thing it allows you to do is to put this directly on another surface and clamp it directly to your workbench. So you have lots of options. Um, I like using a brad nailer on these because for me personally, I just use some clamps as you'll see at when we get going with this. And um, I, I like them as is, but you could use brad nailer, you could put some screws in, you could do whatever you want to make it however you want. And you can stack them up to make bigger trays, etc. So all I do is I just have that kind of roughly centered and I'm just gonna brad nail it straight to the thing. So you don't have to go crazy with it. These little, I only use two nails in case I want to pop it off and adjust the mold, but um, you could use screws too. That's probably a smarter move, um, but this won't show up in your mold at all. And now it's ready to go. It's ready to be used. So for clamps, I just use these DeWalt uh, clamps. I use these because they have the rubber on them. You can use like metal C clamps, but it is wood. So if you are trying to crank it down, you'll, you'll just dig right into the wood. Um, with these, you don't have that problem. And I have like four, I have, I usually use four per, but sometimes if for a bigger mold like this, I've never done this particular shape before. Um, you might need six because you might need one on either side as well. The other thing you can do is if you have a press, you can just slide it right into the press, press it down and it, it'll press it for you. Leave it there for maybe five minutes. Um, but yeah, that's it. They're super easy to use. And this project, believe it or not, is really simple and they're super fun. So we're going to get into the wet molding part of it. So to get the right size, 
uh, for the chunk of leather we're going to put into this mold, I basically just go by the size of the outside of the mold. I just use it. I've found that it always usually gets me enough to trim. Now remember, the way that we do it, we're looking to have a little bit of a lip. So if you wanted to bang these out with just like 10 ounce, you know, 8 to 10 ounce leather and cut them flush, you could use a little bit less material than this. But we want a lip that we can sew. So I'm looking for to have a little extra. So I just have cold water here. You can use hot water, you can use whatever. Um, a tip, don't try to carry a whole <laughs> tray of this stuff across the room. Bring the tray, use a watering can. It's not just for B-roll, it's because I've spilled trays of water before. Um, Buckle Guy, it, the cool thing that I just realized that Buckle Guy does, when they have their panels done, or when they have, this, so this is Wicket and Craig, but it's split down to like, this is like three ounces. They actually have the backs of everything finished and I didn't even realize that, that's sick. Um, so like normally, and there's nothing wrong with it, but like normally when you order, um, from a supplier that has Wicked or something like that, and you order a thin, they'll split it down for you, but then it's unfinished, unfinished back. Apparently Buckle Guy, um, has their backs finished, which is sick. So that means they're ordering all of this leather to wait. And if you're not going to be lining anything, you're going to have a nice finished back to work with all the time. I'll confirm with them. Actually, hold on a second. So yeah, they do. I just called Hugh from Buckle Guy, and all of the backs are finished. So they have they order everything split down and then finished. That's a really really nice touch, to be honest with you. Um, we're new to, we're new to working together. We'll, we'll learn their whole catalog soon. So what I'm doing is I waited till everything was saturated through, which is not 20 or 30 minutes. Like it usually just takes five minutes. I'm gonna let it drip drain a little bit. I'm just gonna set that aside, and I'm bringing in my mold here. And this is the first step. It's This whole project is super easy, guys. You're going to like them. I mean, I, I make them for fun all the time. You can ask Kaylina. We have so many trays <laughs> floating around this workshop with nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. um, I have I just, a dozen at least in there. <laughs> I just can't stop making mm -hmm. them. So the green is the, the, the one that I want to be on the inside of the tray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to flip it upside down and put it on my mold. But we have our top part to do all the hard work. You've seen me do the thing before where I nail everything down. I've done that for years. We don't have to do that here. We're just going to put the green down. What I do is I just kind of mold it just like that with my hands a little bit. Now I want this one to be on the bottom, so I'm going to put that on top of the green. And then we take our top part, and this whole thing seems a little bit aggressive, but I promise you the leather will be fine. Take a top part, put your weight into it, and then that's it. We just clamp it down. So it's kind of like if you've ever, you know, it's kind of like lug nuts when you're replacing a tire. What I like to do is kind of go opposite corners just to get the tension of everything right. Because if you go once, I mean, you can go one side at a time, you're not going to mess it up, but it's just kind of easier to apply the clamp when you put the clamps on to just kind of do like go with this one, then do a little bit on this one, then do a little bit on this one. Just kind of go in like a star pattern or whatever. Um, I've noticed it's just easier to get the leather evenly pressed in the mold itself. And you can also see from the side, that looks like we're pretty, you don't want to overwork it and break your clamps because believe it or not, these aren't the highest quality clamps. They're pretty light use, but they're perfect for leather work and they're ergonomical to use. Um, and that's it. So we are just going to let this sit. I usually let these sit overnight. Um, just to make sure that they dry and that's pretty much all the hard work so we're going to come back tomorrow and we'll show you how we do all of our finishing work we're going to crease the edges we're going to do a stitch line we're going to have a nice little lip and um yeah we'll be back tomorrow all right new shirt new day uh it's kind of late in the day sometimes these take a little long these can take a while to dry if you leave them in the mold like for 24 hours straight so what i like to do i did this last night actually um but it was off camera, um, what I'll do is, after they've been in the mold for an hour or two, I'll take off the top, and I'll just, it'll keep its shape. Like, you can see how nicely that's formed. And that way you'll really let, like, these parts dry, because what can happen is the top will dry, but by having the wood, like, sandwiched, obviously there's no airflow, um, just let it dry like this. And then in the morning, come back in, Put this on and you can clamp it in and really get that nice crisp edge while it's just barely damp. So we are fully dry now. 
Um, this next step, this is kind of a three-day process the way I do it. So this is our bottom. This is our top. You could see this is a little, I went a little too lightweight. So this is very thin leather, like three ounces. I would go like four ounces. These, these molds, they have an eighth inch gap. So you really can't go over 12 ounces, but this I think is a little too light um, because we did get a couple wrinkles here. Now that's fine. You'll see once we make this, that we're gonna basically cut almost all of this away. But uh, three, three ounces when you're only using a five ounce bottom might be a little too light. Good thing is though, now it's time to glue everything up. And once we get everything glued up, I like to let these sit overnight glued just because there's curves and stuff. You don't have to, but that's just how I like to. So if you do happen to pick some leather that's maybe a little too thin, I'm just gonna use some of the stiffener that we like to use. This is a thin nylon. This one has a sticky back. And I just cut it out to fit in the bottom. Uh, this might not even be necessary, but I'm always, you know, better safe than sorry. And this will just make sure that if we did pick a leather that's a little too thin, it won't be super floppy once we have everything together, which after we glue it and do all of our stuff, I highly doubt that's actually going to be the case. But next step is we have to do the glue up. Now what I like to do is I take the molds and I put my pieces on the molds, right? So we have the bottom is going to fit into this, the top is going to fit over that. And we're going to try the toline toline free barge for this one. I have, we usually just use the standard barge, but they made these cute little containers of the new stuff. So we're going to use this. And all we do is just slather it on both sides. I mean, it's, it's pretty much just like gluing up any other wallet or leather piece. I tend to go kind of heavy if you're using uh, leather with a finished back. Um, you can either do two coats or you can do one kind of heavy coat. This stuff smells like a hair salon. So that's interesting. And like I said before, we don't need to glue all the way up to the edge because we're only keeping about an eighth to a quarter inch of this lip. So that'll kind of prevent us from getting our mold covered in glue because we're never gonna go near that edge. Okay, so usually, I read up about this, I've, honestly I've never, this is the first time I've used this, besides we did a sample and it seemed to work pretty well, so. Um, but this one, apparently you don't, you just wait five minutes, but it has a four hour work time and it's never gonna be fully dry to the touch. So we're gonna set a timer for five minutes and then we'll come back and just put it all together. And then we're gonna wait till tomorrow to finish it up. All right, so we are, it dries a little stickier than the normal barge, but it smells really sweet like candy now. So that's kind of cool. Um, so this is how I do this. I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but I've made dozens of these at this point because I'm obsessed with them and uh, this worked well. So this is our base. I'm gonna leave it on the mold. This is the bottom. So this is gonna be the top of the tray when you're looking down at it. This is the bottom. I'm gonna kind of roughly place it on here, but you don't, it is covered in glue. So you gotta be careful. I just wanna make sure it's lined up and then we're gonna do this. I just slam it on there. <laughs> It's um, like almond. That's what it is. It smells like almonds. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. We'll see if it sticks. <laughs> Give it a go. Um, I'm going to take my roller, go around the outsides, and this will make sure that this base is nice and stuck down because these corners here, when you do the pop thing, um, they don't stick down all the way sometimes. So I take my roller, I'm going to flatten that down, and then what I like to do, and again, you can come up with any way to do this that you want. I like to take the top and put it back on and then put it in the clamps and I'm gonna actually leave this for like an hour or two. I'm sure you could get away with doing this for like five minutes, but I like to be extra safe, uh, extra sure that this, this stuff is like fully glued down so that it doesn't separate. Even though we're gonna stitch it, you know, you can never be too careful. Um, obviously this would be a fairly difficult thing to put into like large production um, if you're doing it this way. But if you're just doing like single 10 ounce leather, you could bang a hundred of these out in a day probably because you don't need to leave them in the clamps as long, as long as they get the shape, they'll dry in the shape if you use a single piece of leather. So we're gonna tighten this down and we're losing light as you can see again. So we're gonna turn this into a 3D process. I'm gonna be sa better safe than sorry, we'll leave this overnight to dry and we'll come back tomorrow and finish it up. All right, so day three, glue should be dry and remember this is not a three-day project it's just a 
between dry times and our production stuff. It just kind of worked out that way with filming, but you can get these done. The dry time on the leather takes 24 hours or so, but the gluing part you can do in an hour. Um, but as you can see, our glue is all set now. So when we pull this out of the mold, we're going to have one full tray. And now it's time to do some trimming. So the first step after this is all glued up and out of the tray is to get it trimmed up. Now, if you're not going to stitch it, or if you're going to stitch on the side, you could just cut it so it's flat. But I use a lip so that I have something to stitch. I'm going to do a quarter inch, a little over a quarter inch lip. So I'm going to set my dividers to like about a quarter inch there, a little bit over, maybe three eighths of an inch. I'm going to kind of butt it right up against this side here. And I'm pushing kind of, I'm only pushing down on this one. I don't want this one to really dig into the leather much. And just make a light mark. It doesn't need to be really super deep. This is just a rough guide for you to cut. So the first thing I do is I take my ruler. It depends on the shape. Um, they have They make a bunch of different shapes. This one has a couple of straight sides, so I'm going to get those taken care of first. Be a little careful with this one, holding the ruler is a little tricky. But I'm just going to do a few light passes, you don't have to get it all in one go. So we got that side, and then we got this side, and then of course on the curves, there's really no other way to do it but to freehand, so make sure you're ready to take on that task. It's not hard, it's a nice broad curve. So this I think is my favorite part of this project because we just did our trim. So now when we flip it over, technically we're going to see like pretty much our finished tray because we used a nice strong glue. So if you don't want to stitch this, you can finish the edges and this is it. So you ready? There we go. Nice two-tone tray. Fully lined, no open grain, just all beautiful leather. But we're going to do a little bit more to it. So. We have to flip it over again. Actually, I'm going to bring this over to the power sander. You want to just sand, give everything a good little sanding and make sure that you clean up your cuts a little bit. So let me go do that first. You've seen that a million times. Then we'll get to the stitching and all that kind of stuff. So once we have everything sanded down and the curve is nice, um, what I'm going to do is to make it really easy, I do this on all my trays, I stitch from the back. So I'm just going to use my dividers to mark my stitch line. And then we're going to go over and punch our holes. And it's a special day, because uh, this punch pad I've had for 12 years. We've used, we filmed every video with it, and you can see it's like indented. We've used it so much. So we did pick up a new one. This one's from Japan. Bako guy carries it. Um, like I said, we're not going to be just randomly switching out our whole shop, but it was time for that one to go. So this is our new punch pad. We're going to give it a little review. I've only used one. I've used it once yesterday. We have two of them. And uh, I really liked it. So. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to mark, because of the curve, now this depends on your shape, I'm going to use my chisels to mark where the straight part starts on one side and on the other, but only on one end. Then I'm going to go through with my two prong and I'm going to mark just one by one. I'm going to put one prong in the existing hole and mark the next hole. I'm not punching all the way through yet. But this is just to get the spacing perfect. So this is called a cobbler's anvil, and you put shoes on it or whatever, but if you can find one of these, like an antique store, you can find it for 20, 30 bucks. They're really good for projects like this because you have this right angle here. Actually, if you watch Beto, Beto Beto's leather work on YouTube, he is a cobbler, and you can see the many uses for it in shoes, but it's actually great for just general leather use. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, my hammer and I'm just going to knock down these stitches just to close up these holes.
if you would like to do any edge creasing, um, the mold also serves as your holder, basically. So I'm just going to use our simple little cheap edge creaser. Um, I'm going to wet the outside of this, and this is before I bevel. I'm not good at edge creasing with this thing, so doing it before I bevel kind of helps. And then dampening the edge, too. I'm going to do a little dye on the edges before I burnish. So dampening actually helps make the dye lay a little e more even. But I'm just going to go around and dampen this a little bit, basically just case it, and then make sure my edge creaser is set to the right distance. I don't want it to be too far away from my stitch line. Yeah. While I have this in the mold, I'm going to bevel the top edge. Then, take it out of the mold for the last time, and we'll bevel the underside. I'm going to get a little fancy with it here. I have some Phoebing's uh, Light Brown Pro Dye and just a Q-tip. You can do the marker thing. I've just never done it before. I'd like to try it though. Buckle Guy apparently sells markers, so we got to get one of those and give it a go. Um, but what I'm going to do is I have this sanded down to 400 grit and I'm just going to kind of darken the edge just a tiny bit and then when we burnish it, it'll darken a little bit more. And I'm using a Q-tip because I don't want to like get the dye. If it gets on the green a little bit, that's fine. It's a dark enough color that it won't. You won't see a hard line, and it's basically the same color as this. So you can go pretty easy, or you can go pretty. Uh, you don't have to be super rigid trying to get a good line because it's going to look fine either way. If you were to use like a dark brown or a black, I would be a little bit more careful. But that's why I usually pick when I'm dyeing edges like this. I usually pick a color that's kind of close because, to be honest with you. I just don't have the steady hands to get a really nice crisp line with just a Q-tip in dye. So we'll go around this a couple times. I like to just make sure I get full penetration of the edge here because it'll you'll go back and see it soaking in and get a little, get a little lighter. And then once we're done with that, I'll just give it a quick burnish and we'll be done. And here we go. So I threw some uh, gum trag on the edge, burnished it up through some wax, nice and shiny. And I like doing this when you do the two tone because it gives it a nice edge where you, you can't really see the two colors meeting and it makes it look really, really professional. So that's how we do our two, our double, our line trays. Um, they feel almost, it's weird to say, but they feel almost fake when you hold them because you you know it's leather, but like it feels like it's wrapped around something. It's hard to believe that it's wet molded because these, these molds make them so precise. But I'm obsessed. If you follow us on Instagram, I got one of these molds like six months ago and I've made so many trays. So, um, yeah, so let's talk about, let's come over here and talk about, remember, we are doing a giveaway. So we're giving away the set. We're doing a big one and a small one together. This is what the small one looks like. This is Wicket and Craig's burgundy leather. This is Wicket and Craig's olive leather. And then this is just their tan English bridal on the bottom. Um, but we're not giving away the trays themselves. We're giving away, with Buckle Guy, a set of the molds. So you're going to get the big one and the small one. And we're trying to do, make sure you guys know, like all the colors and stuff that we're using because Buckle has such a large selection of stuff that we're going to be using a ton of different leathers. Like for example, I didn't even know Wicket & Craig. This is a deer printed milled veg tan that Wicket & Craig makes. Now I've been buying Wicket & Craig leather since 2007 and I didn't even know this existed, but it is so beautiful. So we have a whole hide of this. We're going to be making a bag within a couple weeks. This one I did a double, I made a little bit of a wider lip and I did a double crease on it just to give it kind of like some interesting detail. Um, but I want to make sure that I start telling you guys exactly what we're using. So for thread, this is five millimeter spacing, but what I wanted to show you is a comparison of thicknesses. So this is the 0.6 millimeter and this is the 0.8 millimeter Ritza. So you can see that this one's a little bit chunkier and this is, they're both hammered down the same like I did to this one in the, in the video that you, that you just saw me do. Um, but you can see that they're, this one's a little thinner, this one's a little chunkier. Um, if you were to go up to the one millimeter, it would be really chunky, but it's nice. It just lays it's a big thread. So if that's the look you're going for, go for it. Um, our colors, this is colonial tan and this one is beige. 
The colonial tan is more of like a, would you say like a cinnamony tan, caramel color maybe? Mm. Um, I don't know how it showed my up on camera. This is just kind of a more traditional tan. Um, so yeah, I'm just I just want to make sure that we, because we have all this big selection of of different materials now that we're just being clear with you in case you want to pick up the same stuff. The back is just their tan. Um, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, welcome. Buckle guide to the videos. We're so happy to work with them. Um, the response in the last video was just amazing. You guys are already buckle guy customers. We had no idea. So yeah, we're, this is gonna be this is gonna be a cool ride. So remember, click the first link in the description to enter the giveaway. We're gonna announce the winner in next week's video. And thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.